Um, I wanted to talk about the situation with Christians. What is going on with Christians? I have with me Toby Morrell, and Toby is a Christian slash gospel musician and podcaster for Bad Christians. I wanted to talk to Kobe about that, the war on drugs and the quote-unquote African-American community and evangelicalism in America and Trump. Toby, welcome to the show. Hey, how are you doing? All is well. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. I was told that I had your uh, co-host on last year sometime, right? Yep, you did. Joey Spencer. Oh, Joey Spencer. Did you see that show? I did. I listened to it, yeah. What did you think about it? Uh, I thought it was it was pretty good. I think he uh, you tried to hit him hard, and he pushed back in a pretty kind way. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> and so you are a Christian, right? I am a Christian, yes. And I believe how, in Jesus. How long have you been a Christian? Uh, my papa, my grandfather, was a pastor at a very young age. Uh, I went through a little bit of deconstruction and reconstruction in my faith, but I've uh, been a Christian basically my whole life. And I grew up in South Carolina. Everybody's a Christian, right? Oh, okay. And so were you born a Christian, or did you become a Christian later in life? Oh, that's a great question. I probably would have to say I, I don't really have a clear answer to that, but I believe at, at some point, I, I'm, I'm not a Calvinist, but I believe God really does intercede in our lives. Uh, regardless of what we do. I don't know if we can earn our way to heaven or earn our way into Christianity. And so at what point did you decide you wanted to become a Christian or did someone else decide for you? Well, I, you can't separate where you grow up and what your parents and family members, th those are the people that you trust at an early age. So there's almost no way I could separate it. So I thought I was a Christian very early. Uh, I don't think I realized that I actually was a Christian probably until my 20s. Oh, okay. Okay. And so you thought so you thought that you were born a Christian or something like that, and then at twenty you realize you need to do it yourself. Yeah, I, I realized that I wanted it to be my own faith and not the faith of my fathers. Yeah. What is your podcast about? Uh, you are a podcaster for bad Christians. What does that mean, bad Christians? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's called the Bad Christian Podcast. You can get it on iTunes or anywhere you listen to podcasts. And uh, basically, we just realized that there's a lot of people that have been pushed out by the system of church and don't feel welcome in church, feel like they can't ask questions. And uh, so we wanted to create a space and maybe even a, a place where you could talk freely uh, like you would do with your friends. And it's real and not hidden. A lot of church uh, is hidden, it feels like. And so we don't want to be hidden. We'd rather be just actually transparent instead of just saying we are. And what type of people feel that they have been pushed out? I think all types of people, honestly. I, give, I think give me it, an example of who feel that way. Um, uh, definitely a lot of young people who, like me, grew up uh, with, just with the faith of their family as opposed to being able to really ask questions. Like when you ask questions in church, anybody that's ever asked a question in church, you don't really get an answer that is, uh, is sufficient, I would say. So all, all types of people have felt pushed out, for whether it be they trusted a, a pastor and the pastor let them down. Uh, they trusted the, the church system and the church system let them down. So uh, I think that any anybody uh, could potentially feel pushed out of the church or feel unwelcomed or like they can't actually serve or participate. You, you leave the real world and go into the foyer and then the sanctuary and you don't really get to participate much anymore. Uh, there's a person on stage that sings the songs for you, the person on stage that tells you what God's saying, yeah. and then you walk out back on your own. Is this how you felt for a while? Yeah, I, I still do, actually. Yeah, I, I feel very frustrated with the church system. What? I love church people and Christians, but the church system's kind of tough for me. And what do you want from the church? Uh, I would love a place that you can ask questions and it'd be okay to not have answers or actually— uh, participate more. I feel so like that's, that's the biggest problem. So rather than having a preacher preach at you, you would rather go there and ask the preachers questions so you can get some answers. I would love for preachers uh, to preach about Jesus rather than like self-help stuff. That's that's the biggest thing that lets oh, me okay. I want to I want to learn about Jesus. Yeah. I want people to tell me real, real historical or, uh, you know, even, uh, you know, in, anything that, that is about God and Jesus and church, even church traditions and stuff like that. But I, what I don't want is a, a sermon that's wrapped up in three easy steps about how it's going to get better, because I just don't I don't believe that's the way it works. <laughs> and so you say that you believe in Jesus now, right? Yes, I do. And what else do you want to know about him from a preacher? If you, wh Why do you believe in Jesus now? 
I think I believe in Jesus because in spite of what uh, I've seen in the church, uh, I do believe the the world probably needs a savior. I, I, even within my own life, I know that I get things wrong. I need somebody to love me unconditionally, to be able to forgive me, to teach me how to forgive. Uh, forgiveness is like the toughest thing in the world. And that that's why we see our the way that America treats each other right now. And so I think uh, learning about forgiveness and having a uh, God that is 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 about forgiveness and, and teaching you, how to forgive. You important. say that you grew up your your father or grandfather was a preacher, right? Yes, my grandfather was. And so your grandfather didn't teach you about forgiveness while growing up, while you were growing up. He well, I, I mean, just to be honest, I I think he was more concerned about people going to hell, and <laughs> and that was a lot, you know. So a, a lot of fire and brimstone sermons. Yeah. Which he was a he was a wonderful man, and and out of the pulpit, he's one of the gentlest men ever. But in the pulpit, he was. He was on fire, which was really interesting and sometimes fun to watch, but a little intimidating. And did your father, was your father a uh, Christian as well? Yes. And your your mother, right? Uh Uh-huh. And neither one of them talked to you about forgiveness? I don't think they could forgive themselves. Uh, By high school, they divorced and have some bitterness and hurt and pain that they haven't been able to grieve or address. And so what I saw from them was... The world is hard, and it'll it'll turn on you. So you got to be tough. That's and so, amazing. Yeah. And are they still bitter toward each other? Um, I don't know. Well, I mean, I guess you'd have to ask them. I think they're they they both wanted their marriage to work, and it didn't. And so they have some bitterness. But I think it's more about them personally, not about each other. Are you close to your father? Uh, somewhat. Who are you closer to, your mother or your father? Uh, probably about the same. Uh, uh-huh. I live I live a little bit from them, and, and so we talk on the phone and stuff. You know, once you leave home, I, I mean, we're as close as you uh, about you can be, but, um, you know, I don't know if we're, like, talking every day and stuff like that. As a Christian, and so Bad Christian Podcast is about how to overcome bad Christians? No, it's about uh, being. we're all bad Christians. We're bad at, at being Christians. Each of us have failures and things that we try to do that in, end up being maybe selfish or uh, not the right way. And also it even uh, applies to people that uh, aren't good at being Christians in the church system as is. Not being, you know, people that want to ask questions aren't able to ask questions. People that want to learn in, a, in different ways and experience God and Christ in different ways and aren't being able to. The reason most uh, preachers don't answer questions in church, churches like what you need, is because they don't know the answer. They just know how to read the Bible and give it back to you like a teacher, like a teacher in a history class or something. Are you failing as a Christian? Sure, yeah. In what area? How are you failing? Uh, Every single area. I'm selfish. uh, I'm lustful. Uh, sometimes, sometimes I, uh, you know, uh, I'm not the best dad. I'm not the best husband. Uh, I, I, I'm greedy. I, and in most <laughs> ways I, I, you could point to something in my life. Now, also I try to do good things. I could, I could give you a list of good things too, but so it's not necessarily that I feel like I'm a terrible person, but that's just real. And I, so I, I mean, why do you, all, why do you think that you are a Christian, a believer in, as you said, Christ, if you have all that going on in your life? Cause I need Jesus. Oh, so you don't believe in Jesus? No, I said I need Jesus. So do you believe in Jesus? Yeah. And so you don't have him with your belief already? Yeah, I believe that I need him for all the things in my life. So you don't... Good, good or bad. You don't already have him? Uh, I don't really know what you mean by that. You I, said that all these things I, are going I on... I might word that he has me, maybe. But he doesn't seem to be helping you if you, all those things are going on in your life right now. Well, well you that means you think that Jesus is weak if you have sin in your life. And that, no, that's not true. That's not what that means. It means that maybe you don't believe in Jesus. You just think you do. No, in spite of my sin, there's Jesus. It, it, that's, what, that, that's probably the bigger thing. In spite of me, Jesus. In spite of the things that I do, Jesus. Good or bad. If I could be the best person in the whole world, still need Jesus. If I, I mean, whatever you're classifying as sin, you still need Jesus if you're the best person in the world. You have, you, have you changed at all as a result of having Jesus in your life? Uh, yes, but I've changed because of other things too, for sure. Yeah. So Jesus is a component of change for sure. And what, can you give me an example of what you changed from to as a result of Jesus? Um, 
Well, I mean, I would say, for example, I, you know, I've worked at I, I've worked at two mega churches. I've been a worship leader at two mega churches. I've seen many people uh, grow in their faith. I've seen uh, mega churches hurt people, uh, close their doors, and people are left on their own to their own defenses. And so, what I've learned is, once again, in spite of people, in spite of the church, what it's trying to say or promote, or, or you know, trying to get butts in the seat. Jesus is real, so that's what you got to focus on, because the church is going to let you down. People are going to let you down. People are going to lift you up, and the church is going to help you too. Both are, are real and normal, but the constant would always be there is a Savior that can hopefully change your life. And so do you believe that Jesus is real because somebody told you? And, 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 yes, and, and for you, sure. Oh, yeah. That, and um, just there's by, no way to separate that. There's and, no way to separate that. And just by saying it, that make you believe that you believe in him because you keep saying Jesus is real. Does that give you an, uh, the idea that you believe in him because you are saying what somebody told you? Well, the, in my opinion, there's no way to separate what you hear very early. I mean, we are all indoctrinated with something. So yeah. I, I, part yeah. of me wishes I lived in another country that didn't promote Jesus that much. And then <laughs> I, I would and, and I came to Jesus or Jesus came to me and then I'd feel like it would even be more real. That's but, right. Yeah, there, there, there's no way to separate what my parents and family members told me when I was four years old. That's I, amazing. I just can't get it out of my brain. That's such a good point, man. Parents start teaching kids about Jesus, and when they start teaching you, that causes a trauma and causes you to forget about Jesus, and now you just know about him intellectually, but not in your heart. You don't know for yourself that you know that you know. Yeah, I think you're, you're on to something there. Amazing. And so how long have you been married? Uh, 14 years. And how many kids do you have? Three. Three. Oh, yeah. Boys? Uh, two girls and one boy. So the girls came first? Yep. One girl, one boy, then one girl. Real men made boys first. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know what? I wanted a boy when, I, when we started, and then when that little girl came out, it changed my entire world, made me a softer man. So I, I appreciate that I got that experience. I'm me. sorry to hear that, man. <laughs> um, so are you the head of your wife? Uh, I would say, uh, I mean, uh, how do you want me to answer that? In some the ways, truthfully? I lead our family. In some ways, I definitely lead our family, for sure. Are you the head of your wife? Uh, she wouldn't say that every day of the year. <laughs> <laughs> I had to ask her. And so are you the head of your wife? Uh, I would say... We're in this together, and in any uh, agreement, any contract, it, 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 it takes equal parts of certain things. So uh, I would say for sure, I mean, it, it, I, it's just not as simple as saying I am the head of my family. It just, that, that, I feel like uh, that's, that's inaccurate. If you, if you say that you're the head of your family, there's tons of times where my family desperately needs their mother, and, and she is the key to answering questions. So she is just as equally as important in every single way. Are you the head of your wife? I'm just going to say no. I'll say we're equal. <laughs> and what is it like being the, the Christ in the family, even though you may not be a strong one, but you're not the head of your wife? How does that feel not to be the head of your wife? And, and then me, say yeah. that you're a Christian. Yeah. It makes me think that uh, I was told a bunch that I needed to be the leader of my family and the head of our family. And when I took that, it made me respect her less. It made me treat her poorly. And so now I've, I feel like my mind has been opened up a little bit to realize how important my wife is, how brilliant she is, how much she brings <laughs> to the table. And so uh, two become one. So if two become one, which one's the head if two are one? Which that's, one's the head? That's amazing. And right? so... Um, what do you, how do you deal with your wife when the hell comes out of her? How do you deal with that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think hell comes out of her. She's, but she's it feels a, like she's hell at the time, right? Uh, we go through some tough times for sure, but I, I'm, how do you again, deal I'm, I'm with that when now. that comes out of her? How do you deal with that? Uh, poorly. I wish I, I wish I handled it better. And also probably I'm, uh, the, the key reason why she feels that way. Or if she is ever upset, no, I she was feeling that out. way. I'm sure she's that's add to the problem, but she was feeling that way even before you met her. You you didn't nah, start I don't that. Think, I don't, I don't she agree was with already that. like, yeah, because she had a weak father, so she ended up marrying a weak man. 
be, no, be. De- definitely not. Her, her father was military, passed away when she was 18. Very strong man. And, uh, and it caused a lot of trauma that was still effective today. It's still, at, she still deals with that a lot. Definitely not a, a well, weak Well, that's why I said and, she was that it, way it, before yeah. you met her because she it, wasn't weak. It sounded yeah. like he may have been strong, but in the wrong way. No, no. I mean, he's a was a strong man, a good man. Did she love her man. father? Did she love him? Oh, oh yeah, for sure. Well, why was she traumatized then? Because he died. She he was traumatized away. because he died. Yeah, of at course. eighteen. When your father, yeah, when your father dies at eighteen years old, it, 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 that's, and she didn't have the skills, and the church didn't help her learn how to grieve and how to mourn properly. So you have that trauma in the back of your mind for the rest of your life, and in your heart as well. How old are your kids? Uh, they're uh, elementary age, all three of them. Uh, 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 what age is elementary? Like they're in uh, third grade, uh, second grade, and kindergarten. Oh, I see. Are they have they started to act out already? Uh, yeah. I mean, they're kids. Yeah. They have started to act out. Uh, like, what do you mean, act out? What's an like, example of acting out? Be irritated, you know. Uh, everybody on earth's irritated sometimes. Um, um, f- screaming and disagreeing, you know, irritating, not happy kids. They're pretty happy. Yeah, they're pretty happy kids. Um, that's amazing, uh, Toby. This is so interesting to me. Well, I appreciate it. Um, so do you still sin? Yes. You still sin. Yeah. Yeah. As a Christian, you still sin. Yes. And what type of sins do you commit? Uh, I, I mean, the list goes on and on. I, I said it earlier, but oh, yeah, I do yeah. a lot. Oh, yeah, lusting yeah. and anger and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it funny how lusting came right to your mind? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I remember you saying That's that. That's amazing to me. That is amazing. Lust comes right to your mind. For, out of all the sins I listed, lust was the first one that popped in your head. That's I amazing. think that was the first one you mentioned. Nah, I think I mentioned some other ones. But I don't remember. Maybe, maybe you're right. But it was odd to me that as a Christian that you still lust because Christians, mm-hmm. Christians don't lust. Yeah, that's not true. I don't know where you got that one from, but that's definitely not true. <laughs> not real yeah. ones. Yeah, what about King David? Who was King David? You don't know who he was? Who is? <laughs> where is King David now? <laughs> we, we, got, we got a long way to go if I got to explain who King David is. Where is King David now? He died. I rest my case. Yeah. Um, was he a Christian? Was King David a Christian? I believe so, yeah. Okay. At so some he point. Lusted, he lusted, so that's at least one. At I got some one point, on well, he was a Jewish guy. He wasn't a Christian, he was a Jew. Okay. That, that seems like uh, you said he probably was a Christian, but no, maybe I, maybe he was I a Jew. You. He was a Jew. Okay. So he, he didn't really believe in God or that Jesus was coming, and he didn't believe in the Savior. So that guy sounds kind of shady to me. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't want him in our. our he believed you know, in God. Example. I believe that he believed in God, but not Jesus. Yeah. Well, the Bible says he's a man after God's own heart, and then he had a man right, killed because so he, he could believed sleep with his wife. In, so he believed in God. I got to ask you: um, Do you think it's right? Are you for abortions or against abortion? I, I'm not. Uh, I don't think abortions are right. No. Oh, okay. So you think that it's wrong for women to have abortions? Well, uh, that's a very tricky question. So um, I think that abortions aren't good or healthy for anybody. Now, there are times, I do believe, it's a very, very small percentage, but there are times where it literally does impact uh, the woman's health or life, right? Like it, it could actually cost her her life. So if and the so, woman and, going to die, that's the only time she should be allowed to have an abortion? Well, I mean— it, in my world, yes, but I don't want to. I agree to that, that. I agree yeah, to that. It's not that simple though, because uh, well, you and I aren't aren't in their position. So we are in really, a better yeah. position. I, I mean, the, if you want to stop abortions, just get the church that we're we're talking about, just to adopt babies and and spend real money on helping uh, people in the position that they might get an abortion. That that would. <laughs> lower abortion more than anything else if people went okay we're going to adopt we're going to send money like crazy but that wouldn't stop that wouldn't stop these women from having abortions because they already know uh, that they can put the baby up for adoption and they won't and they and still have an abortion female issue though you're saying women men have, play a huge role in abortion i believe that if men got back in abortion at, that women would stop having them because women when they're left to themselves they tend to make the wrong decisions. 
Nah, that's not true. Your wife has never made a good decision on her own. That is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> a big lie. Um, do you support uh, same sex, so-called same-sex marriage? Yes, I do. You support homosexuality? What do you mean by support it? You think it's, it's, it's normal? Do I think it's normal? Yeah. I think a, a, everybody is normal. You think earth. homosexuality in, in is way, normal? It's, it's, uh, I mean, it, what, you, you're making it such a small, in, insignificant thing just to say normal or not normal, and that's not really my call. That's not, that's not my call. But I do mean, you think that is normal? As a Christian, and you are a man, do you think that homosexuality is normal? I believe the government and myself has no uh, say in what you do at your house. Maybe that, maybe that makes me libertarian or whatever, but whatever you want to do with your relationships and your house, you do it. I, it, I, I don't want to call somebody not to be able to experience love or the live liberty and the way they want to leave, live their life freely because of something I said. Do you I, think I, I only homos- get one life. Do you think homosexuality is normal? I'm sure you don't. Do you think homo? No, I don't. Do you? Yeah. Do you think homosexuality is normal? Yes, I'll say yes. And what's normal about it? Uh, well, the only thing that you would probably say is that <laughs> it, it, it's it's same sex, uh, it, being in a romantic relationship together. And I would say that 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 seems normal the same way as a lot of things are normal. It's um, normal. Uh, you saying that it's normal for two men or two women to have sex together? Yes, it happens normally all the time. No, I'm asking all you, do you, are, are, you saying, are you saying that that is normal? Am I saying it for me? No, are you, yeah. Are you saying that it's yeah, normal? I, I, yes, yeah, yeah, I said it a minute ago. It's normal, I think. I think it's a normal thing, just like a lot of things. You said happen. it's normal for two men or two women to have sex together. They do and well, are right now. What's, no, you're saying that it's normal, though, right? It's, it normally happens every Not second normally of the happens. Day. I'm asking you, is it normal for it to happen? For men and women, said, I, for yeah, two yeah, men or two yes. women to do it? I mean, what, what, yes, what, what you're saying is something, you're alluding to something like it's abnormal. I'm only right? asking you as a Christian man, is right, it right. normal? Yeah. Is well, it normal? You, I already said yes. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me take a quick break. <laughs> <laughs> so, Toby, you said you believe that two men or oh, two women having sex together is normal. I think that they can do what they want to do, and I'm going to stay out of it. Same okay. way as I don't, I don't want anybody saying what I need to do with my wife. I want her and I to decide. Right. And, but you personally believe it's normal. As a Christian man, you believe it's normal. I, I used to not, and now, yes, I do. You do believe it's normal? Yes. Amazing. Uh, but you don't think abortion is normal, right? Uh, yeah, I do. I, I think it normally happens, and it's something that, uh, in the right situation, a lot of people that you wouldn't think, especially within the church, would consider it or have done it or will do it. So when you talk about something being normal or abnormal, that's the wrong question. The, the, real, the real question is why and what, what is causing things like abortion. We're looking at the uh, outcomes as opposed to the symptoms, and there's lots of symptoms. And so, but you—, you... Do you believe it, abortion is normal or abnormal? It is normal because it happens every single day, all the time. So it's, everything it's, that happens yeah. is normal? Uh, yeah, I think that's kind of the definition of normal. Something that normally happens. What, what's normal? Uh, you know, you, you go, people go to work every day. That's normal. Uh, people come home. People get divorced. People have abortions. Uh, there's uh, gay and straight marriage and sex and all kind of, all those things are normal because if you look at the data it would show you that these things normally happen. And so men and boys who are changing their body parts to women, you know, putting on women body parts and women who are putting on taking off their normal body parts and putting on male body parts, is that normal? Yeah, cuz it's happening. It's normal because it's happening. Right. And so you believe it's normal. Now, I think what you're getting at is it's not normal uh, due to your, the, the, you know, your Christian doctrine or, or, or belief. So for you, you probably would say it's abnormal, right? But and, th- and that's you, your right. And I, I support your right to be able to say that the same way as I support anybody's right to do what they want to do. 
But you it, as a Christian man believe that so-called transgender is normal. Yes, it does. It it it, it happens all the time. I'm not it asking if it happens. I'm asking you if, as a Christian man, you believe that it's normal. Yes, it norm. It happens. It, I'm it not asking normal. if it happens. As a Christian man, you believe it's normal. What's your definition of normal? You don't know what normal me. I like you to. I want your definition. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know what it means. I, I don't know what your definition. Uh, is. right and wrong, or right or wrong, is normal. Yeah, that's that's that. Yeah, I mean, uh, wrong is normal. Right is normal. The, but, in the middle but, is normal. But yeah. transgender. Is it transgenderality? Is abnormal? Is not normal? Homosexuality is not normal. Abortions so, to have an abortion is not normal. For a man not to be the head of his wife is not normal. There are a whole lot of not norms. What is a man? You're talking about what you think is right or wrong. No, so not you, what you, you I think, think is right or wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It's not what I think is right or wrong. Yeah, it it's is, what God sure. say is right or wrong. But let me ask, what is, uh, are, you, what is uh, are you a man? I know you're a male. At least you look like a male. <laughs> are you a man? Yes, what, I, I, I think I am. And yeah. what is a man? Uh, that's a good question. I, I actually do. I know you do Rebuilding Man. Isn't that what it's called? Rebuildingman.com? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we are rebuilding, uh, yeah. The, rebuilding the family by Rebuilding yeah. the Man, and our website is rebuildingtheman.com. Yeah, I, I, was, I, was, I was looking into that because I'm very interested in men and masculinity. And yeah. uh, what I, I actually run a site called The True Man Experience, and I do I go across the country and meet in living rooms and have an evening where we talk about masculinity and our fathers and uh, the the how we view our identity. I do the same thing at, at truemanexperience.com. But I think that, uh, what, what was your question again? Am I a man? I said, yeah, yes, yeah, I am. What is a man? Well, I think that the definition has been skewed and, and changed because it's, I mean, it, it, it's tough and it, and it's tender, it's strong and it is, uh, uh, soft in some ways it's, it's gentle. And yet, uh, sometimes it can be, uh, vicious or angry or uh, abusive. It can also be loving and forgiving and caring. There's all kinds of things that masculinity can be. It'd be hard for me to define any single person's masculinity. I think that's the bigger issue would be them figuring out their identity and knowing that. And then you can start Amazing. with a little bit more of a foundation. And so what is a woman? Uh, you'll have to ask women. I, I wouldn't, I mean... You don't know what a woman my, is? Well, it, I mean, I can give you my definition of what I think a, a woman is, but and what, what does is that a, mean? What is what, a what woman? Is it, what does it mean if I give you that definition? Well, what like, is what, it? And your definition, what is it? Well, well the, the problem with these questions would be, what good is my definition of a woman? Because it, it's either, a, you know, a, a trap where you bust me and go, nope, that's not what a woman is, or it's just <laughs> something that I, that I think. I mean, it's just something I think. Well, what do you I mean, think I, a woman is? I mean, I mean, you can say all kinds of things. I, I, I think my wife is a woman. And I, I think she has feminine qualities. I think she has uh, nurturing abilities. Uh, she has strength. She has some masculine qualities that uh, it, it, that you might would define as masculine, like strong, uh, 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 hardworking, honorable. But th that, that's not just masculine or feminine. That goes across the board. Amazing. So, uh, I mean, um, in my definition, I, I, where I'm at right now, I, I do think uh, a man has uh, – I, I, I am – looking through right now what is gender and what is ma masculinity and all those things. I know some people are now saying that gender is separated from, you know, our sexual parts, uh, you know, our, our genitalia, but that, and that's an interesting thought. I don't know where I'm at on that. So I don't really have anything to say on that. Cause I, I don't know. Amazing. I've always, I, I was always taught that a man has, you know, a penis and a woman has a vagina. Have you forgiven your mother for what she did to you? Uh, Actually, yeah. yeah. You 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 went to her and forgave her. We had a very long, very drawn out conversation, uh, which I don't want to get into the details of. But yes, I I was definitely holding some resentment. She might have been holding some resentment to me too. We had but a very long conversation. You didn't do anything to her. She did it to you. You didn't do anything to her. She well, shouldn't she, have any resentment toward you. Well, uh, I definitely did some things to her, for sure. But that was that, her getting herself yeah. back. You only gave back to her what she did to you. Well, well when that may, you're, you're making a good point where your family leads you, but her response that's why to she my ran your father. My, uh, that's why she ran your father off. He couldn't have her either. 
Nah, she didn't run him off. That's I guarantee thing. you she ran him off. Nah. He couldn't was, handle, was, he couldn't handle was, her. That was right down the middle on that one. He couldn't handle her, her because you become like what you hate. And he hated his mother, so he ended up marrying his mother. He definitely didn't hate his mom. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, lo- he loved my grandmother a lot. And she if he had woman. loved his mother in the right way with the real love, he would still be with your wife. I mean, you hate, be with your you mother. hate your mom? Not anymore. Oh. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, are you for a big, beautiful wall around the borders? Uh, I, that, I'll tell you what. I, I'm very interested in border security. I think it probably is more important than people are saying on both sides. A wall seems a little silly, honestly. I don't, I don't know if it's like if there's a wall right now, I don't think that's going to actually solve our problem. Once again, that's just something to say, and it's, it's not address, addressing the symptoms. It's just some outcome. So I, I'm not really sure about that. I do think uh, securing our borders is probably a, a smarter thing to do, but, the, uh, but this you, wall thing doesn't make that much sense. To are me. you for a big, beautiful wall around the border? I guess no. <laughs> and um, uh, when these illegals so is it keeping people out or keeping us in? That's the thing. I don't know. I, nobody's when, told me that yet. When are you, are you, when these people illegal alien come into our country, uh-huh. they end up in, in black communities first and foremost, and so they are fat a black people Americans first and foremost in the area of drugs and crime, and they're running blacks out of their own communities. They, they are um, taking jobs from blacks, uh, education from blacks, because the schools are overcrowded. Uh, when these black American women uh, who are having babies out of wetlock need the government hospitals, they can't hardly get in there because of the illegal aliens. Does it bother you that blacks are affected first and foremost uh, by yes, illegal I, I, aliens? Uh, I don't know your stats, and I don't know where they're from. I'm, I'm assuming that that's a reputable site. So, I, I mean, I, wherever your facts are coming from, I believe most likely what you're saying is, uh, you know, uh, illegal, uh, illegal people that don't 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 come through the the process uh, probably don't have much money and end up in a, a poor community, which uh, is probably populated by Black Americans. Yes, which is also another sim- is another outcome of symptoms that we aren't addressing. So. I could see that happening for sure. And, yes, that's, that's what I'm saying. I am pro securing our borders and making it uh, possible for everybody to come to so, America the right way. So are you bothered that black Americans are affected first and foremost by illegal aliens? I'm, I'm bothered a lot by how the black community has been treated and what's going to happen in many ways. For are, sure. you, are you bothered that illegal aliens are affected black people first and foremost? The only person I've heard say that is you, so I don't know. But if that is true, what you just said is true, yes, I'm bothered by it. Um, then why wouldn't you want the wall around the borders? That would stop them, as they did in Israel, it would stop them from coming in. Because yeah, they're going to have a wall, and then they have the workers, uh, border guards, or whatever agency around the borders, and they have other things. Why wouldn't you want the wall around the border if it, you're bothered that black people are affected first and foremost? I would say the cost of the wall and its actual effectiveness don't match. In the long run, is it costing us more to take care of illegal aliens that keep coming in or the wall? Well, the majority of illegal aliens take jobs that pe- uh, Americans don't want. That's not uh, true. It, yeah. Yeah, it is. No, it's sure. not. But what costs us more to pay to have a wall up or continue to pay year after year for illegal aliens who keep coming in? I don't know the answer to that. What what does common sense tell you? Uh, that a wall probably isn't as effective as how much it costs. So, so I, I would rather spend five billion dollars on something that would be really no, effective. No, but what does common sense tell you about a payment, a one-time payment on a wall, as to put, paying money out every year for yeah. illegal aliens that are coming in yeah. every year? Well, the wall won't be a one-time payment. There would be unbelievable maintenance on that and unbelievable security that would go there as well. So the costs, once again, of a wall don't seem that effective as compared to what it will actually but stop. But in the long term, so, so in the long you, term, which bother you, which cost the most, the I, wall I'll, or the illegal aliens coming I'll in? I'll answer your question. What percentage will a wall keep illegal aliens out, as you say? Like, what's the percentage? Is it 100 percent? Yes. That's a, not true, and you know it. <laughs> it happened in Israel. <laughs> nah. Did you know that true. they have a wall in Israel? Yes, I do. Should yeah, they I, have I've a wall? Should they have a wall in Israel? I, I, I it, 
I'm glad it is working for Israel. Here, I just don't think it would be cost effective. Should they have a wall in Israel? Let Israel do what Israel wants to do. Should they have a wall in Israel? I have no idea. They have one. Should they have one in your opinion? <laughs> I, I'm not talking about Israel. I'll talk about America. No, we're talking about if you don't want America to have one, why would you want Israel to have one? They, you said they already have one. Is it, yes, right? they do. Yeah. Is so it right? They, they, for, already, they already have it. And they, they decided, those, the, the people of Israel decided to build a wall. In your Christian opinion, is it right for <laughs> Israel to put up a wall <laughs> and, keep the illegal, and keep the illegal out? Is that right? I am pro-border security. Uh, but I want the most effective, cost-effective way so that we don't waste money on something that could potentially not be that effective. Is it right for, as a Christian man, for yeah. Israel to do it? You said it's not right for America. Is it right for Israel to do it? Keep the illegal out and protect themselves by putting up a wall? I'll say yes, because Israel decided to do it. So that's But their why is it not right for America? Most of the American people in America, along with Great White Hope, want the wall up there. Why isn't it right for us? I don't know if most of America wants the wall. But, yeah, they uh, do. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. That might be just something you're saying. But uh, I, I mean, what I'm saying, and I mean, I, I can't say it any clearer, the, the wall doesn't seem that effective. I mean, um, it, it, So it, I, you're telling me that as a man and I a Christian man, you think that a wall does Are you a liberal? Uh, no, I'm probably, I don't, I don't know. I don't like uh, those... Classifications. I probably fall in the libertarian area somewhere, maybe. Did you vote for the great white hope? Who's that? The president, President Trump. Oh, <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> you did not I, grow. I, I, I you did not, not vote to, for the great white hope. I, nope, I chose not to vote. You didn't vote at all? Right. Okay. Well, thank you. I'm glad you didn't vote for cricket line Hillary. Let me, <laughs> let me ask, uh, do you love the great white hope? Do I love Donald Trump? Yes. No, I don't love him. As a Christian, do you love him? Definitely not. Really? He's not, I don't think he's much of a Christian. Is it possible to be a Christian and not lo love all human beings? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I, I mean, that. It, <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um. So I mean, you, you, you how told about me a few the abortion? Ago you, used, you used to hate your mom. When you hated your mom, were you a Christian? No. Well, that's a good answer. <laughs> and um, so you are okay with the abortion thing that they passed, a so-called abortion bill that they passed in New York last week, where a woman can have a, an abortion all the way up to the ninth month, hey, even no. at the ninth month. Yeah. You're not okay with that? No, I'm not. Why not? Uh, the, the language seems pretty specific to open doors to things. And I wish it was a little bit more, uh, 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 yeah, I wish it was more specific on, uh, the actual. What happened? You froze. You froze. Unfreeze. Toby. Yeah. Can you hear me? I can, can now. You all, I have Esteban called in from Arizona. Ar uh, Esteban, you're on with Toby yeah. hey, Morrell. Esteban. Hi, Toby. How you doing? Hey, um, I, I, I'm doing well. Um, I don't think I, I really have a question. I just have a comment and see what you think about it. Um, okay. As far as um, Jesse was talking about being the head of your wife and the family, um, I before I was uh, before I realized that I had the anger and that I you know I was uh, messing up my my family by messing up the order by putting her ahead of me. Um, everything was 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 just going the wrong direction. Once I realized that and uh, and I, I forgave my parents, and, you know, I started, uh, I, I, and God, he corrected everything. He put me as the head of my wife, and everything started working again, which what I mean is, like, I took all the pressure off my wife. When I became yeah. the head of her, I raise my kids. I tell them, I, I take all the pressure. She doesn't, she'll, she, she likes to, she'll nurture, but I correct her. I correct the kids. And all the pressure that she had on her before, um, with, with taking care of the kids, um, being uh, just, 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 she couldn't handle it. And, and, and she's not supposed to Do you have a question for man. him? Well, I, I, I just want to, uh, what, what do you think of that, Toby, that, that, that the man is supposed to take everything that, that, that the family endures and the woman isn't supposed to? And when the woman's taking that, 
it, it just disrupts Matt, get an answer from Toby. Go ahead, it? Toby. Yeah. Yeah, es- Esteban, that's a, a great point. I realize, like, my wife, uh, I'm terrible with numbers, and my wife is great with numbers, mm-hmm. kind of like, like an accountant yeah. brain. And so yeah. I realized, though, while she was handling our finances, I was like, oh, she's got it, no problem. And then I realized later, after, you know, uh, years, that that was a huge weight upon her that I wasn't uh, helping her to carry. So I think you make a good point. I think the, the, th- the way I would uh, say that would be, uh, there are things in our marriage that we carry together. Some I carry a heavier load, and sometimes she carries a heavier load on her shoulders, whatever it might be. But I do think that you're right. I think there's certain times where you have to realize uh, your wife is under pressure or a weight that she can't handle, and it's because you haven't taken up your portion of it. Thank you, Esther Bar. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Tell me, you have anger? Yeah, I do sometimes. Yeah, I deal with that. So is there anything ab- about your life that indicates that you do believe in Jesus? Huh. Uh, I could say for myself, yes, I, I, I believe, believe I've had experiences with God and I believe with Christ uh, that have transformed me and changed me and helped me to believe. Uh, so that's for me. Yes, I can. I can probably prove it to myself. I don't know if I can prove it to anybody else. So what can you give me one example of proof? That you do believe in Jesus? Um, I try, just like we're saying, like uh, with anger or with uh, things that aren't helpful to my family or to this world, uh, I try to go to God and ask for change, for help, to see things more clearly. Uh, You know, uh, uh, I don't know if if prayer can save somebody's life necessarily, but I do believe prayer can change your life. And it prayer ends up being a personal thing like a mantra to God that says, Lord, I want to be better. God, I, I, is, I ask to help for help to help me see more clearly. Is it possible and, to be a Christian and have anger? Because anger is of your father, the devil. That's his nature. And yeah. anger is judgment. It's resentment. It's uh, everything that Satan is. And God won't let you enter the kingdom of heaven within unless you forgive so why don't you go and forgive your father and mother for what they have done to you, for failing right. you, so that God can forgive you and, and, and bring you back into the kingdom? Yeah, like I was saying, I, I have been working on that for sure. I think you're right about forgiveness is maybe the most important thing on earth. Uh, I, I, uh, well, why, a, don't, why don't you go and forgive them? Don't ask them yeah, for no, forgiveness. No, I, you forgive them. Yeah, like I them. said before, I, I've forgiven my mother, and, and uh, I guess I've probably mostly forgiven my dad, but working on a few things uh, about that. Why haven't you out. forgiven him completely? It, it takes a long time to pull all that stuff out. It's years and years. It inside doesn't, minutes. it doesn't take but a second twinkling of an eye to realize you're wrong for having anger. And then you need to forgive. Yeah. And it's yeah, you all can realize you, Yeah. You can realize you're wrong, but that doesn't mean you immediately are uh, free of all that stuff you've been carrying for a long but time. But you are the moment that you forgive. No, not, not for me. It wasn't. But you don't know that because you haven't forgiven your father. Uh, like I said, I've been working on it and definitely have it's had It's not anything that you can change. work on. It's something that you do. Yeah, I, I disagree. It, uh, it, well, I think it's something you do, but not in a moment. No yeah. way. No in the way. twinkling of an eye, you can be free. You can be born yeah. again. But yeah. you got to forgive, Toby. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> Let's go to Rick out of Virginia. Rick, Rick thank you for calling you on with Toby Morrell. Hey, Justin, Toby, Toby, good morning to you guys. Hey, Rick. You too, Rick. You know, I'm for the wall sports of like, you know, with this government shutdown, you, you get all these government workers. And the revelation I get from this, um, Justin and Toby, is this, that people should have their finances in order. If a government worker is making 80 or 60,000 a year, he's looking for paycheck to paycheck. I believe that's a big problem that they, that, the uh, government workers to do some soul searching themselves. Rick, I mean, uh, Toby, you don't believe that putting a wall up around, a big, beautiful wall around the borders uh, would be the most effective, co- I mean, the most cost effective? Well, Rick, I think, uh, I mean, uh, answering, Kobe? answering Rick's question, I think he's right. I, I, I really believe one of the most effective things we could do is help people in America understand their finances and that they should be prepared for anything. Like so you any don't moment, believe at, putting a wall up is at, the most cost effective? Totally. Well, at, any, at any moment, our government can shut down. So yeah. what, happen, what happens when the government shuts down and the wall isn't protected? 
Do you believe right? that? What happens then? Do you believe that putting a wall up is more cost effective than anything, Toby? No, I do not. You do not. I Amazing. could be wrong, but I, it doesn't sound like it to me. But Amazing. I think Rick, Rick does make a great point. Thank you, Rick. Toby, I'm Helping right you. out of time for this first hour. Thank you so <laughs> much for coming on. How can people listen to your podcast? Yep, you can go to badchristian.com. Uh, uh, we also have a site called Marriage Supply, which is uh, allowing Christians and people within marriage to spice up their marriage life. That's marriagesupply.com. And uh, you can go to the True Man Experience and find me there as well. Amazing. Toby, I absolutely appreciate you coming on. Thank you. It was amazing. Yep. You're amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Toby. Thank you. All right.